Hey, greetings, everyone. Lieutenant Colonel Alan West here, and welcome to the Steadfast and Loyal Podcast. You gotta light them up before they burn it down. Better dig deep and put them in the ground. Blood on their hands, they're hell bound. Save us all. This episode of the Steadfast and Law podcast is brought to us by our good friends at the United States Concealed Carry Association. Being a responsibly armed American is both an honor and a responsibility. It's not one to be taken lightly. If you own a gun, then you need the self-defense education training and self-defense liability insurance that you get with a USCCA membership. Click learn more below right now to explore your membership options, which are risk-free with the USCCA's bulletproof money-back guarantee. Guys and gals, the U.S. Concealed Carry Association was founded to help responsibly armed Americans like you and I. They're committed to providing life-saving self-defense resources to help you and your family be safe. When you activate your membership, you'll automatically get life-saving self-defense education, industry-leading training, plus self-defense liability insurance. Don't wait until it's too late. Click learn more below right now. And as always, the USCCA is not an insurance company. A policy has been issued to the USCCA by Universal Fire and Casualty Insurance Company. That policy provides the association and its members with self-defense liability insurance subject to its terms, conditions, limitations, and exclusions. Hey, greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Steadfast and Loyal Podcast. And of course, you know that one of the big emphasis that I have is on our local level elections. And I've always said that uh, the most important election in the United States of America is school board, but it is the election that has the least amount of voter participation. And we have got to get that uh, understood. We got to get more people out for school board elections. Just look at what just happened up in Wisconsin with a Supreme Court position election that was up. And most people in Wisconsin did not know that there was a an election for Supreme Court. And that's very important. And it was an election that was lost. So we got to do a better job informing ourselves. And so that's what we want to do here. And so I am joined by a candidate for the Louisville, Texas Independent School District. Louisville is up here in Denton County, uh, North Texas area, kind of strides along I-35 going north. And that is Ashley Jones. And this is Miss Ashley Jones. I'm a devoted wife and mother of two. My husband and I have been married for 22 years in March, and my two wonderful children are 11 and 13 years of age. We have lived in Flower Mound for the past five years, another suburban area here in North Texas, but we relocated to Louisville in 2007 from West Texas. I began my career as a licensed vocational nurse 23 years ago, where I learned valuable skills caring for patients in various settings. I paused my career 10 years ago to become a stay-at-home mom, but I have maintained my nursing license in order to return back to my passion once my children graduate high school. As a stay-at-home mom, I have had the pleasure of being able to volunteer at our church as well as volunteer at both my kids' schools. I served as a copy room volunteer for three years prior to the pandemic. Then I served one year as a copy room coordinator after the pandemic. At various times over the last eight years, I have also enjoyed many opportunities to help with classroom activities. I have also volunteered in the community with my children for the last three years. We have enjoyed spending time working with Keep Flower Mound Beautiful, as well as giving time to wrap presents for the Angel Tree Program at the Louisville Independent School District. Welcome to the Steadfast and Law Podcast, Ashley Jones. Thank you, Mr. Allen West, for having me. Oh, it's too easy. Now, you have decided to throw your hat into the ring for Louisville Independent School District trustee position. It's an open seat. What inspired you to do that? You know, I think that a lot of parents, including us, were 
um, surprised in what we learned when our children came home during the pandemic and what was being taught during that time. Our children were home with their iPads and they had the Zoom meetings with their teachers and the curriculum material that was presented in front of them surprised us. And I'll give you an example of one of them was um, my son came to me and he said, Mom, I'm uncomfortable with this assignment. And I was like, baby, what do you what do you mean you're uncomfortable? He says, well, it's called the number devil. And it was an mm. insert from the ELA. And we, me and him. ELA is, is education. English okay. Language arts. Okay. Um, yes. And it was an excerpt assignment. So it was just a short little short story of the actual book. And if you look this book up, you will see that there's an actual animated kid-like devil on the front of this book. And again, it was an insert. And so my son and I were discussing, wanting to figure out maybe was this maybe possibly a villain? And they were using this as a folklore genre. And that was not the case. Hmm. They were taking this um, number devil as an actual hero type to help a young child while he was dreaming to help him with math numbers. Incredible. I was shocked. I was, you know, I was naive going in thinking that this was a a villain. This was, mm -hmm. you know, and so they did not portray that such in this type of curriculum. And I was very shocked. I was naive. I, I assumed. Well, you were like, every, you were like every parent that, that it was, it yeah. was fine. For you're a you're like child. every parent that assumed the best. I, I am, yes. you know, giving my children over to these teachers. These teachers are going to be yes. focused on educating my kids and not using this subtle indoctrination means uh, by which they try to push a certain agenda. Right. And I'll give you a second example. This was my eight year old was um, in her Zoom meeting at eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> And there was a survey question presented to her. Again, she's eight years old. And the teacher says, we're going to do a survey, and you have to answer one or the other, but you can't say neither. And the question was, you have a choice, and you have to pick one or the other. You can't say neither. To, the question is, you can lick the side of a trash can or lick the bathroom floor. I was stunned. I was upset. I was at sure at first I was like, baby, what did she say? And I looked to my daughter and even the little child um, in the zoo meeting said, Miss such and such, what did you say? Yeah. So it wasn't just me as a shock that she had presented such a a survey question to an eight year old. You know, we send our children to, to school, and we tell our children, trust your teacher. She's your authority. You are to respect yeah, her. Yeah. And do we really know what's being taught to our children? Well, I think more so, so we're learning what is being taught to our children. Right. And all of a sudden we're realizing, you know, looking at the books that are there. And it's so interesting how the left will say, well, you guys can serve your banning books. No. We are looking at books that we feel are contributing to the delinquency of, of our children. We are looking at books that are sexualizing our children or grooming our children. We don't want that. We want them to be educated. So when you look at Louisville ISD, how many you know schools are there? Because that's an incredibly growing community. Is this a big issue across Louisville ISD? So what there is this facade is the best way I can describe this and you know we moved into the Flo flower mound area so we can continue with the best so to say the best um, school district out there for our children and I still have hope that we have really good teachers out there that are wanting to teach the basics but what we are seeing is that there is an overreach of government telling our teachers what they can teach, how they can teach, and when they can teach. 
we have good teachers that are feeling overwhelmed and stressed because they're being told that they can only teach 60% of the basics and being told that they have to teach all this other indoctrination of 40%. That is not okay. This is not why we send our children to our schools. We want to get back to the basics. Science, social studies, reading, math. Reading and math is key. Yeah. We have to learn to read, to read, to learn. And this is for all grades. My son was seven uh, in seventh grade, and my daughter was in fourth grade, and they were still struggling to understand reading comprehension. They would recite the words to me, but they wouldn't tell me back what they were understanding. Yeah. So the critical thinking is missing. And it's because we're taking so much time away from our basics. We've got to get back to our basics, and we need parental rights back allowed back into our schools. You know, when you talk about parental rights back into the schools, so I think you are for more transparency yes. uh, as far as the curriculum and, you know, the, the parents being shareholders and stakeholders as well. How do you feel about this whole, you know, standardized testing thing? You know, that's a really good question. Well, I, that's why we're here. You we know, have my, really good I, I, from yeah. a personal experience, yeah. my daughter does not test well. She she gets very nervous and anxious and oh, I her test, test anxiety. scores yeah. don't reflect that she knows what she's learning. And I've had to really work with her on that. Mm -hmm. I think there's so much emphasis on these tests that it truly may not reflect exactly that they know, but the numbers that are coming back post pandemic are not good and that's including all students. Well sure. And I'm concerned because in these tests, it there's three levels. There's the approach, the meets, and the mastery. Approach is not passing. Meets is barely passing, and mastery is they, they're on grade level. So we, we don't have, in my opinion, the right test. We don't have – we're not even doing it correctly. Now we're going to test in them – the entire test is on iPads this year. Mm. And that takes away, in my opinion, the mind engaged with a pencil and paper that they can concentrate and be able to write and still learn and stay focused on what they're learning. Now they're testing on the iPads. Yeah, look, I'm an old school I don't think guy. That's a good idea. I, 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 as you can see right here, I like cursive, and of course, cursive mm -hmm. is gone. The cursive taught me discipline, uh, mm -hmm. it taught me patience, and it taught me precision. And I think that's something that we need to get back to. So, exactly, this is an open seat that you're running for. And uh, I saw some pretty interesting uh, uh, pictures of your opponent there. Uh, it seems that she does not believe in placing the hand over her heart for the, uh, the, the Pledge of Allegiance. But what differentiates you from your opponent in this open seat and for this race, for this Board of Trustees position? So what separates me apart is I love our country. I am a daughter of a first responder. I am a nurse. I am, um, what a lot of people don't know is I am also am a qualified substitute teacher. Okay. And so I have the skills and I have what it takes to be that bold, strong, firm parent voice on that board. And we're lacking that right now. And we need that. And um, we need some, also some medical experience on this board What's being pushed on our children, the indoctrination, is dangerous, mm -hmm. very dangerous medically. What I am seeing and what I have, um, there was a whistleblower that came out January 9th of 2023. I'm going to say this very politely. I do not align with her values, but I encourage each and every one to go and read this whistleblower. Her name is Jamie Reed, and she goes into depth the dangerous in the medications that are being pushed on our trans children. This is dangerous. As a medical profession, this is not safe. We are not providing a safe environment when we're pushing this type of agenda, and it needs to stop. 
Well, I would agree, but, you know, and that's why we have to get the right type of people on school boards so they're making the right policy decisions. Exactly. What's the current composition of the Louisville Independent School District Trustee Board? You know, we helped a, about two or three of the school board members win their race. Okay. We were very active in the community, and the, they are some really proclaimed Christian candidates, and they have won their race. We helped them win their race, mm -hmm. and we stood alongside them and did so. And we were hopeful that when they won the race that they would get in there and they would vote correctly. They voted for the Rhythm app, which we tried to tell them very politely, this is not safe. What you're providing is not correct and it's dangerous. Okay, and the rhythm. rhythm app. Okay. So we actually have a um, copy of the receipt that they bought the rhythm app for $250,000. This is our taxpayer dollars going into a rhythm app where our children can circle an emoji of how they feel on that day this is part of the social emotional learning. SEL, yeah. Yes. And even what we have found out is that if you answer that you're hungry three consecutive days in a row, you will get a phone call from the CPS. Mm. And they do this question right at 1130. Yeah, right well, what do you think? Lunch. I'm going to be hungry. They're going to be hungry. These kids are growing. They're always hungry. I was feeding my children five or six times a day when yeah. they were young. And still am feeding them a lot. <laughs> yeah. My grocery bill reflects that. But, you know, we we are not doing our children any due justice. We need to get back to our basics. We need to allow our parents to partake in the education process. Don't limit or put a barrier in front of us. Yeah. Allow us to be that, that, that parent to come in and want to help and be there. And we're not... We're not getting that. Um, we're not getting that from the school district. There's a lot of concern here in Texas about the all-powerful superintendents now and the <laughs> mega salaries that we see. I think the average is like three hundred, three hundred fifty thousand dollars. I mean, it's it's enormous, it, it, enormous salaries. What's the relationship be, between the Louisville ISD Board of Trustees and the superintendent there for the ISD? You know, I can give my opinion about that, um, and I want to choose my words wisely because mm -hmm. if I win and I get on the school board, I want to be able to get on there and, and we'll never really say, share. Yeah. You'll you be know. positive. You will. Yes. Um, the superintendent that we have is Lori Rapp. She's been with the school district for a year, and I believe that we are going along to get along and not really taking that stand and doing what is right. And we need to do what's right, not go along to get along, just to per se, one small minority voice over the majority. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't see a strong presence there. Our teachers are losing their joy. We have good teachers that are leaving this profession. And it's our job as superintendent school board members we need to invest in our good teachers they are leaving yeah. and you know again i still have hope that we can turn this around that we can stop losing our good teachers but i am hearing some really not good things out there right now and i am i'm concerned i'm concerned we're going to lose our good teachers and if i have anything that i can share with our teachers right now hold on Hold the line. We're coming. Yeah. You win this race. Your top two priorities. Um, get back to the basics. Okay. Parental rights. We need to put common sense, common decency, and we need to protect our teachers and our kids. And so when you talk about get back to the basics, that's the educational basics. That's Reading, right. writing, arithmetic, math, science, technology, yes. and engineering, all you know the core principles uh, mm -hmm. that builds a productive yes. citizen and, and critical thinker instead of these uh, exactly. you know, rote memorization robots. Exactly. 
libraries. <laughs> Big deal up there in Louisville ISD. I mean, what's what's going on with your libraries? Oh boy. <laughs> Um, we do have a problem, um, and I, I want to encourage our parents in this because this is what happened. This is our personal experience with this. My daughter brought home a book and I was like, oh, hey baby, that's, that's a cute little book. Is, can mommy read this? And she said, of course, mom, Mm -hmm. sure. I read the book. And about the first 50 pages, I'm like, oh, yeah, this this book will, this will be okay. But something told me, keep reading. 90th page in, 100th page in, I'm like, whoa, wait a second. Come to find out this author has award-winning nominations for this book. And she is um, the supporter of the 1619 Project. Mm. And it's in our library. And we met with the principal and the librarian. And, of course, there was not a agreed upon um, at that meeting. So we challenged the book and we lost. Hmm. So even in the book process, we are finding that we're losing our voice, that it's not being heard. And what I want to challenge my parents is ask questions. You have every right to ask questions about your your educational material, your library books. They are there. Those type of books, just because you think you're in LISD does not mean it's not happening in LISD. Yeah. I am first experience and saying it is happening. There's also some good things with LISD, but what will happen is if you're naive and you're sticking your head in the sand and you're not going to address this, we're going to turn into Frisco ISD. Look at what they're fighting right now. Look at McKinney ISD and what they're fighting. Look at Keller ISD. They were lucky last year and got their school board turned around. I mean, look at what um, Grapevine Colleyville ISD, they're turning their board. Things are happening. But what we are seeing in LISD is we are seeing that parents think that this isn't happening here yeah and if you think parents that oh my goodness she's a whistleblower think again i'm not i am finding these small pods of homeschools around the lisd area there is problems and we're getting shut down we're being told this isn't happening in lisd and it's a facade it is happening because our teachers have had enough they're stressed out. They're frustrated. You have parents that are angry and mad. I am one of them. We have had enough. And if you think you're going to pull your kids out of LISD and take them to another Texas ISD, it's happening everywhere. West Texas is having a problem. Houston is having a problem. San Antonio, all of the state of Texas is having the problems that we're having in LISD. Mm. You cannot run from this. So you either need to take a stand and help me and another conservative who is fighting in the place six, help us fight, help help us win this battle for our kids because we see what's going on. And we have caught our teachers teaching their agendas. They're intermittent, but they're still there. Okay. What so, place on the Louisville Independent School District uh, Board of Trustees? Are- I am running for place seven. Okay, and you have someone running for place six. Yes. So we want to get you two in there. Yes. Now, you told me that you brought in a little uh, poem that you wanted yes. to close us out with. So go at it. I'm going to read this poem that was read by a pastor. I do not like green eggs and ham. You know that's my pastor. Chris I do McCray. not like Sam. I am. <laughs> I do not like them on a boat. I do not like them with a goat. I do not like them on a train or in the, in the dark or in the rain. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I tell you what else I do not like, calling good things bad and wrong things right. They come and try to destroy our structure, barging in with this council culture. With angry expressions, they were sent to come at us with their agenda. You know what else makes me see red? 
attacking Dr. Seuss and Mr. Potato Head, or Speedy Gonzalez or Pepe Le Pew, and the Bernstein Bears, to name a few. You can't say that or you can't say this. Well, I've had enough. I've made a list. Council culture has crossed a line. Had I believe that it's past time for the body of Christ to take a stand, join in unity all over the land, on Christ a solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. But cancel culture, I disagree that we can't say words like he or she. The Bible for me settled this issue. If this makes you mad, then grab a tissue. Male and female, God created them. And who are we to challenge him? We came to earth as a babe in a manger. To this kind of love, we were all strangers. See, Jesus came to save the lost, so he died upon that old rugged cross. Laid in that tomb for three whole days, the defeated foes was death held in that grave. Here is see what all power, dominion, and might, with the stone rolled away, he finished that fight. We can fight too. The church must make a stand. Stand up. Been silent too long, and I've had enough. The church at one time had abandoned her post, losing her freedom and the things we love most. This is a time we take it all back. Yes, we'll stand up and get back on track. I started this poem with green eggs and ham, but it's really about the great I am. Yeah, Sojourn Church, Pastor Chris McCray, and it hangs in, uh, in our church there. And uh, he's been on this podcast as well. So Ashley Jones running for Louisville Independent School District Trustee Board, place number seven. What's your website? Where can people find you? Ashley for LISD at gmail.com. And if you don't live here in North Texas in the Louisville ISD, please go out and vote in your upcoming local school board elections here in the state of Texas. Early voting starts on the 24th of this month of April. The actual election day is the 6th of May. So please yes. go out and vote or else I'll find you. <laughs> Thanks for being here with us, Ashley. Steadfast so and loyal. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining us on this episode of the Steadfast and Loyal Podcast. Thank you so much for Ashley Jones coming in and talking to us about her vision about bringing education back to our kids here in the Louisville, Texas Independent School District. As always, if you like this podcast, please click the like button, share it with others, and get more people inspired to go out and run for our local level elections, city council, school board, county commission, water management district, Whatever it is, get out and let's run for these offices. God bless you all. Step fast and walk. Before they burn it down.